Okay, uh, here we have this sort of green, bluish book with this gold uh, decoration on the front there, I believe showing uh, Athena. Um, this is uh, Murray's Manual of Mythology, um, and it is uh, revised by W.H. Clapp. Um, and uh, we've got the publisher down here, which is pretty uh, well-worn. I believe it's Altimus or Henry Altimus. Um, there's no obvious gilding on the pages at all. The back is just a solid color. Um, so it's really just got that one decoration on the front. Uh, let's take a look here. So we've got the title page and a frontispiece uh, showing a bust of Apollo here um, facing the title page, which uh, is Manual of Mythology, Greek and Roman, Norse and Old German, Hindu and Egyptian Mythology by Alexander S. Murray, a Department of Greek and Roman Antiquities in the British Museum, with notes, revisions, and additions by William H. Clapp, headmaster of the Episcopal Academy of Philadelphia, member of the American Philological Association, University Archaeological Association, Association etc., etc., and then it's got 200 illustrations and was published in 1898 by Henry Altimus. Looks like the original copyright was 1897. So we've got a, a preface here. Um, this book's got a lot of things to show, so I'm just going to sort of skip through these. Um, there's an American editor's uh, preface and then a publisher's note as well. And then we've got this... Uh, nice image of the Acropolis of Athens. And then we've got a table of contents, which is pretty short, but these are big sections. We've got Greek and Roman mythology with these different subsections, Norse and Old German mythology, uh, mythology and religion of the Hindus, and then we've got the mythology and religion of Egypt, and then an index at the very end there. And then we've also got a, another uh, engraving here, it looks like, of the capital and temple of Jupiter. And then a list of all of the illustrations, the full page plates, and then a list of text illustrations as well. And then this is pretty cool. This is a sort of genealogical tree, a table of descent of the gods, starting up with uh, Uranus and Gaia and Pontus, um, descending down here into all the different uh, minor gods. Then we've got all of the relations of Jupiter here extending out, and then their sort of uh, sub-relations. All right, and then we've got the introduction here with this uh, decorative image above it. It says, There is a charm in the name of ancient Greece. There is glory in every page of her history. There is a fascination in the remains of her literature and a sense of unapproachable beauty in her works of art. There is a spell in her climate still and a strange attraction in her ruins. We are familiar with the praises of her beautiful islands. Our poets sing of her lovely, genial sky. There is not in all the land a mountain plain or river nor a fountain, grove, or wood that is not hallowed by some legend or poetic tale. And it goes on to list the uh, the names of all of the, the famous people that we know from ancient Greece, um, including the philosopher Socrates, Plato, Epicurus, and then the uh, these additional famous uh, people here, the historians, mathematicians. It's got uh, Herodotus, it's got Archimedes and Euclid. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just got a, um, all of this here. It says, we emulate her in many ways, but always confess to failure. And when we have no desire of emulation, we are still ready in most cases to admire. So I'm just going to flip forward until we can start looking at all of these illustrations, since there's so many of them. So we've got a picture of Olympus there, and then we've got Gaia in this sort of outline drawing. Um, we've got uh, Eros there. And then a great bust of uh, Zeus or Jupiter. And then we've got a section uh, talking about the different deities of the highest order, it says. So these are the most major gods and goddesses. We've got Cronus and Rhea. Cronus has the sickle there. Um, and then we've got uh, on this uh, next page a section about Saturn. So we also see the sickle in his hand as well. Um, Here's another image of Rhea, and then we've got another one here showing a star and a moon. And then this is Zeus or Jupiter with the eagle there, I believe, and then Jupiter again. So this uh, just has a ton of uh, great illustrations. This is uh, Hera or Juno, 
And this is the marriage of Zeus and Hera. And here we have the the interior of the Temple of Zeus in Olympia, showing Zeus, the big statue of Zeus in the middle there. And then here's Astraea. There's a brief one of Hera again, and then this is a Poseidon um, with his trident. I think we'll see him again here. Yep, a larger statue version. And this is a uh, Amphitrite, it looks like. And Hades on his throne. Oh, and here's a uh, Tantalus, Sisyphus, and Ixion, showing different punishments, I believe. And then this is the uh, Danaides. I don't know how to pronounce that exactly, but the ones who are supposed to carry the water, but it was always draining out of the vessels that they were carrying it with. Um, the abduction of Persephone. Triptolemus. And we've got Demeter, or Ceres. Um, associated with agriculture there. And we've got Hecate. We've got a section for Hestia or Vesta, showing her there. And then we've got an example of one of the Vestal Virgins, I believe. And then Ares or Mars, a bust there. Another image of Ares, um, and then Mars and Venus together there. And here's a Vulcan, or Hephaestus or Vulcan. There's a legend about um, about uh, Venus being sort of betrothed to a Vulcan, and uh, um, but she sort of runs away with Mars or Ares, and uh, and then Vulcan traps them both in a big net. Um, that's not what it's showing here. This is actually talking about how Hephaestus was originally the god of fire, um, but then became associated with all the things that are made by fire, like uh, weapons and anything that a blacksmith is supposed to do. Um, and all sorts of uh, sort of incredible gadgets and things like that. Um, here's a statue of Athena, so uh, Pallas Athena, with I believe Nike in her hand there. Um, and this is the Palladium. And then we've got uh, the sun god Helios or Sol. This is all still a uh, Greek or Roman. Um, deities, but towards the end, uh, there's a, um, it goes into different mythologies, um, Egyptian and Norse, and, um, and there's some, uh, Hindu, uh, mythology as well. So I'm just sort of flipping forward. We've got this, uh, nice large image here, the Amphion and Zethus. You can just see how many images there are in this, and how rich it is with information, and, and all these different legends. Um, here's a great image of a fighting Amazon. Okay, so now we're getting into the Norse mythology. This is an image of Thor here. And we've got a section for Baldur. It says, Baldur means the shining god. His son, Brano, means daylight in the Anglo-Saxon theogony. His home is uh, called Breidablik, the far or wide shining. And the name evidently conveys an idea similar to that suggested by Greek words, such as Eurifasa, Eurinome, and Eurydice. And then we've got Freyr here, riding on a boar. And we've got the wolf Fenris, and you can see how large it is in comparison to these little tiny people right next to it. <laughs> so this is a gigantic wolf. Um, and then the uh, Valkyrie, or the Valkyrior, there. And now we've got a section for Hindu mythology. So this is the incarnation of Vishnu. I love this image. It's so, so trippy. This is the Vedic god, so we've got Indra here, 
Um, wielding a sword, riding on an elephant. Here we've got Agni, associated with fire. And then we've got a Trimurti, or the Hindu trinity, um, Brahma and Saraswati. We've got a Vishnu again here, and Shiva. And Kamadeva, and then a, an image of uh, Buddha. And now we re are in the section for Egyptian mythology. So here's Ta, and then we've got Amun. These are all great images of these statues here. And then we've got a, a section for Osiris. The great deity of the Egyptians has been by some identified with the sun or sunlight or the vivifying powers in nature. According to this view, the sleep or death of Osiris uh, means the sleep of the spring maiden Brynhild or the imprisonment of Persephone in the dark realms of Hades. Um, so it's uh, one of the interesting things about this book. Uh, oh, here's a great image of Osiris. Uh, one of the interesting things about this book is that the author um, continuously tries to sort of unify all these legends together or see the commonalities amongst them, which is uh, pretty interesting to see how they have all these sort of shared elements. Here's the image of Thoth. And then uh, that's sort of the end. We're at the index here. There's a brief uh, uh, ad at the back for the Age of Fable. Um, and that's uh, Murray's Manual of Mythology. If you like the video, please... Uh, leave a like or a comment and consider subscribing and uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we hope you like it. Thanks. Bye.